ahead. Our mission statement, Helping Parents Heal is a nonprofit organization dedicated to assisting bereaved parents to become shining light parents by providing support and resources to aid in the healing process. We go a step beyond other groups by allowing the open discussion of spiritual experiences and evidence for the afterlife in a non-dogmatic way. Affiliate groups welcome everyone, regardless of religious or non-religious background, and allow for open dialogue. Attendance today at this meeting is voluntary, and we are here for the benefit of learning from and sharing with other parents whose child has passed away. It is understood that our discussions are intended to be confidential and not designed to replace traditional therapy or spiritual counseling. Helping Parents Heal offers a wide variety of speakers to allow parents to be informed about many possible ways to heal, to connect with their children, and to learn about the afterlife. The views expressed by our guests do not necessarily reflect those of Helping Parents Heal. We ask that you take from their presentations whatever may benefit you personally. Welcome, everyone. Thank you, Irene. That was beautiful. And I want to just say, first of all, that Daisy is one of the first people that I met on this journey, and I feel so grateful that she'll be speaking to us today. She is an incredible bright light. She's also a shining light parent, as we are, and she has helped so many people in this group. And I, I have enormous gratitude for her. She actually overworks herself, and the fact that she's here today and able to speak to us about what she do does is amazing as well. And um, I see in the chat box so many people saying hi to Daisy because you've all had readings with her already. So introducing oh her goodness. is probably not even necessary, but I will. I'm going to go ahead and tell you just a little bit more about Daisy before we get started. Um, while Daisy is based in England, she does readings worldwide. She has been working with Spirit for 10 years and this ability came to her naturally. She has never learned through books or other training. She has just allowed this ability to develop in a natural way. And through the readings she's done over the years, it got stronger and stronger. Daisy doesn't hear voices. Rather, her information comes by, uh, via visions, images, thoughts, and remote viewing, which she really enjoys. Her readings are always about love, light, healing, and peace. Her hope is that at the end of the long, hour-long reading, a parent will have a sense of peace. She is also a mother of a son who is in spirit and has been on this journey for 36 years. With the help of spirit, she would like to help all of us connect with our children in spirit and help lift the heavy weight off of our shoulders that she carried for so long herself. Most of her readings are conducted with Facebook Messenger video, FaceTime, or Skype. Daisy doesn't want to receive any information before a reading. She prefers to work, uh, do the work fresh with no poor knowledge. She also wants to thank Helping Parents Heal uh, for allowing her the opportunity to assist parents that struggle with grief and just want to connect with their children. She is sending love, light, healing, and peace to all. Aside from working as a medium, she has also been in the nursing profession since 1984. During the last 17 years, she has worked in the community with palliative patients, looking after them until they pass. And so without further ado, please join me in welcoming Daisy Moore. Hi, everybody. <laughs> oh my goodness, I see so many names just popping up with people. Oh, it's so, it's so lovely to see so many names of people that I've read. And thank you, Elizabeth, for giving me this moment as well, because this is my first time doing this with you. I have done something similar with Tracy a few years ago, but this wasn't quite the same. Okay, so thank you for doing this. Sorry, I, I should leave my microphone on. You're very welcome. And I, I guess that what we would love to hear, first of all, is a little bit more about your journey, how you arrived where you are right now, how you became a medium, uh, because this came naturally to you, and a little bit more about your son, if possible. So uh, basically, um, I found out a um, I found out recently, I'd say in the last two years, that I'm actually the fourth generation to be, be a medium. 
I didn't know this until I did my family tree and then I got in contact with people that are also mediums in my comes from my father's side so I know that much from the more side okay um, so how I started off was when I as a child I saw spirit but I realized when I was made fun of by family members that didn't understand it, because we are talking the early 1960s here. Yes, I am of that age. And um, that, that I realized that they didn't see what I saw. And one of my earliest memories was probably when I was about seven years old. Back then, we didn't have seatbelts, by the way. And I remember sitting in the back of my parents' chair, the car, and we were doing, there was a couple in front of me, and I clearly could see the man driving and the woman sat next to them. And I remember saying to them something like, you know that lady, she never seems to move, she just stays in that same position, and her husband's forever doing this, and moving his head and talking to her. And my, I clearly remember my parents saying, that I needed to get my eyes tested because there was only one person in that car. And gradually things happened. That was probably when I was like seven. That was my earliest memory. And then gradually I realized that people didn't see what I saw. My family didn't see. And let's face it, in the early 60s, what I could see and what they didn't understand, I realized it was time to shut my mouth because it wasn't going to work. And then I would say, um, I ran, it was one evening, I will never forget it. It was about half past six, seven o'clock at night. I suddenly was sat in my bed reading my book, which I always read a book before I went to sleep because I was a bookworm when I was a child. I read this book and I really became emotional and I had to run into my mum's room. And she was in bed and my, my dad was in the, in the TV room and I started crying and I said to her, I don't want you to die. You mustn't die. You can't leave me. Not yet. And my mum looked at me. She was 44 years old and she said to me, but I'm not going to die. You know, and I said, but David said to me that you're going to die. My brother David died when he was a month old in 1961. And I then was only 15 months old. So I told them that my brother said, David said that you're going to die. Anyway, I ended up sleeping with my parents that night because I was so distressed. Sadly, the following Saturday, my mum died in her sleep. I was 10 years old. So I believe that I knew that something wasn't right. And I knew. And anyway, so my mum died. And, um, and then from there, sadly, my dad couldn't cope looking after four children. And we ended up with children's homes and foster care for four years until I was nearly 14. So then my dad, um, he remarried and I had a new family. I had a, I had a step -mom. And so my life just carried on as the way I, I, I just stopped realizing that people couldn't see what I saw. So I no longer said anything. And then I had my first son in 1979 and my second son in 1980 because I only wanted two children. And I thought this is going to be great. I'm going to have two children. I didn't mind what I had as long as they were healthy. Throughout my pregnancy, I kept saying to my husband and my midwife that it was something wrong. And I felt that my, my baby was going to die. So they told me not to be silly and stuff like that because I'd already had my first son. So when Mark, Mark Anthony was born, and he was born at eight pounds, two and a half, I never thought any more about it. Because he looked healthy and he looked perfect. And on 24 hours after he, part, after he was born, I suddenly had this awful feeling like I'd had when I was pregnant with him, that something was wrong. And I just shouted at the midwife and I said, there's something seriously wrong with my baby, like I said. And to cut a long story short, Mark was born with half a heart and he lived four days. And he died um, the same day that John Lennon was shot, and most people remember that. So I, uh, again, I had that, that feeling. I put away, uh, in 1984, I started doing my nursing, 
So I put away a lot of to do with all this, although lots of things came up over the years and I shared things with people. And then um, around about 2001, when I started doing palliative care nursing, that it all started to come back to me. And I feel that was because I'd had four children, I'd had a busy life with being a mum, nursing, and just so many other things going on that I couldn't have dealt with this, not this. And so slowly it started creeping back in. And then from about 19, uh, from 2004, I'd say that's when it really started taking a hold. And that's when I realized that um, my, there's a bigger picture to my life and it wasn't no longer about what it had been before and all that, almost like it had come full circle daisy you're amazing and everyone in the chat box is talking about how sorry they are first of all about your mother what a horrible thing to have happen at the age of 10 but then also about your son and obviously you are in a position to understand where we're coming from and I, I just can't imagine being in a foster home as well, but you are such a huge, bright, shining light, and everybody's talking about how you sparkle with, uh, with beautiful energy. So anyway, going on from this happening, um, one of the things that I would love to hear about is that now when you do readings with people, you are able to remotely see where they are and what's happening in their lives through their kids. Could you talk a little bit more about that for us um i actually noticed that remote remote viewing started for me probably around 2009 that's when it started creeping on and then it just got bigger and bigger so remote viewing is for me as anybody that has a reading with me and i know there's so many probably people that are watching me right now that have readings with me that all i see is them and like you see behind me nothing else Sometimes it will start off as I start a reading where they will start showing me their house from outside in where I'm going to be reading the sitter. They will often show me the car, the cars or car that is parked on the drive. They would tell me the colour of it. They would tell me how to get into the house and how the house is three bedroom, four bedroom or five bedroom, whatever it is. They would then take me to the back of the house and show me their whole back garden. They would tell me what the client is wearing. If there's a dog sleeping by their foot or a cat sleeping by their foot or there's even a shredder near them. They're very good in that. They can also show me that not only are they doing remote viewing with, with you and me as we see it together, they will then say to me, by the way, will you tell, will you tell the person let's just say it's a mother that I'm reading that's lost a son for example will you tell mum that I'm with granddad right now he lives in this house and I would tell them what their house looks like he is now water in the garden he has a black and white dog walking with him he's wearing gray pants with a white shirt they will actually describe all that then they will say to me in case the parents are separated that grandma lives in this other house she right now is doing this. She drives a red car or a yellow car or whatever it is. But they just do things like this to me. And to me, look, I just look at myself as the in-between person. I really am the in-between person. I just say what I see and I just go from there. That's beautiful. And it, it's tru truly amazing to think that our kids are able to describe to you where we are and what we're doing. If we have one of our pets at our feet or our fur babies, I don't really like calling them pets, but um, anyway, it's, it's truly wonderful that you can do that for people and add that to a reading. And I also just wanted to ask you a little bit about people with dementia or people who are in comas, because you had said something about this as well. And then we'll get to the questions, but there are lots of questions actually, but if you could talk a little bit more about that experience and what you see. You no, know, I, I really would like to use a lady, and she has given me my permission to say her name. Um, her name is Sandra Russo, and she lives just outside New York. And the first time I met her was probably four years ago. I did a reading for her. Her dad was very unwell. She had her mum had just passed, and her dad had dementia, and she was looking after him. 
And so what happened in the reading, her mum opened up the reading and then she brought in her dad. And she said to me, but Daisy, my dad is still living. He cannot possibly be with you. And I said, he is, he's with her. And then I described everything. And she said, you've just described my dad's nursing home. And then I described carers. I described what he's wearing, the chair he sits in. And it just went from there. And she just said, my dad is communicating with you, Daisy, but he has dementia. He has full on Alzheimer's. And that's when I realized I could, I could communicate with people that are living and breathing on this earth. But, but their mind, they can go from one thing to another. The brilliant thing was her dad told me, will you tell my daughter I have a sore mouth and my tooth is hurting on my right hand side at the back. The reason why the, the carers are telling you that I'm not eating is not because I'm not hungry, it's because my tooth is hurting. She then contacted the, hospital, the nursing home and she said, will you please check my dad's mouth? And they just said, his mouth is fine. They said, no, I want you to check his mouth and his tooth. They had someone come in, they checked his tooth. He needed the tooth removed and it was inflamed and infected. Once they removed the tooth and took the inflammation out, he was able to eat again. And that's what he told me in the reading. That's amazing. And it's so beautiful. And I'm sure that it was such a huge help to him to be able to come through and speak to you. But it also gives us all hope about this whole pandemic, knowing that no one is ever alone, that actually, if they've been put into induced into a coma, they're with their loved ones, they're having a great time, and they are not at all suffering. So I'm, I'm happy to hear that. And also, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about suicide and people who pass from drug addiction as well. If you could talk a little bit about them and when they cross over and let people know because it's all good. Do you know, um, first of all, I want to say that I lost my nephew to suicide when he was 11 years old in 1988. And so I, I know via my sister, you know, with my sister losing her son. So I have that as well in my family. And I just, let's just say he was bullied. Okay. So um, the reason why I love to do people that have passed a suicide is because they show their family members just how much at peace they are. That's what I love the healing and peace that they have. They show me the moment, however they passed or they chose to pass, how they go straight to spirit. There is no hanging around. I've seen who they've showed me they've met with. Some people have showed me their, their pet dog that died when there was a child that was there to greet them. And then they show me their mom or their dad, their grandma, their granddad and stuff like that. And it's instant. I see it instantly. And it, I just feel that is such, such relief for parents to know that they just go to love, healing and peace. There's no, you know, everything, whatever goes on in this world ends in this world, our materialistic world. When we go there, we have our guides, angels, our spirit family to support and guide us. And that's the way it is. That's beautiful, Daisy. Oh my gosh. And we have lots of questions that I'd love to be able to answer or to have you answer if that's possible. Um, yeah. Sherry's asking if you've ever done a reading for a loved one who did not come through. Could you maybe uh, address that and talk about what to expect in a reading? Now, see, if I say that, if I answer to that question, I don't want that to change what's always happened for me. So can I prefer <laughs> not to answer it? Okay, Mind? don't answer that question, but could yeah, you just, just tell just us a so little bit about wood. what we have, we have a saying, touch wood here? In the yes, UK, could, you, could you just, instead of that, tell us what to expect in a reading um, with you? Maybe just um, explain. You know, can I just show you how I start as if I was reading you, Elizabeth? This is how yes. I start. I always say to the person, welcome. Yeah, I've always already sent out everything to show you how I'm going to work. 
because I want my your full hour that you have paid for to be a full hour. I don't want to spend 10 or 15 minutes talking about me, okay, because it's not about me, it's about you. So what I do is I send out how I work to everybody before a reading, what to expect, how to prepare. The moment we, you press and I press that button, the first thing I will say is, hello? Right, first of all, this is how I work. Your name is on here. And I will write down and doodle things as I go along. I will also show you at the end of the reading, I have a shredder behind me. Let me prove I have a shredder behind me. Let's not just say it, okay? Okay, so I have a shredder behind me. I shred everything that I write. I don't keep any information on people. I explain that in the reading. I also light a candle for everybody that I'm going to read for, okay? And then I start. I always do a white light breathing exercise beforehand. So as I just let people know that it's my way of connecting. And then I just let spirit do the rest. Sometimes what happens is, Elizabeth, look, a grandparent, a grandmother, a mother, a father, a dog, a horse. I've had many animals come in and start reading as well. And sometimes I start with remote viewing straight away in describing their house from outside in. I go with the flow. I am literally the in-between person. That's all I am, okay? And then I just go with it. I just go with it. And I say to people, whoever opens up the reading is my door opener. Please bear with me. If for any reason you didn't get on with your mother, you didn't get on with your father, whatever happens, please don't say you don't want to hear from them because they're my door opener, they're the ones I'm relying on and bringing in who you want to hear from. So be open to that. And then we just let it flow. That's absolutely beautiful. And it's so much fun to, to hear how you do this. And to well, everybody, know anybody that's had readings with me will tell me, will tell you that's how I work, exactly how I work. Well, yeah. I am one of those people. I think that yes. I think that you've probably read thousands of people in your career, which is amazing. And my reading with you is amazing. Was but, that um, four years ago? Was that about four years oh, ago? Oh, it was longer than that. It was probably Five years like ago? nine years ago. I think it was more like nine years ago. <laughs> oh my gosh. It's so long which ago is, that I read you. It's amazing. And um, it was very healing when I did it. It's, it's interesting because I haven't had readings with a lot of psychic mediums, um, but especially ones that I've had an appointment for, I guess, because I've been very fortunate to have people give me information from Morgan. Um, but you were one of those in the very beginning. Can I quickly just say to you, because you know I forget readings because I shred everything and everything. Okay. Can I just quickly say that I just got told to say, and don't forget your baby girl. Who? Oh, oh, really? Oh, Chelsea. Okay. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> I just got told. Okay, because you mentioned your son and someone said, don't forget your baby girl. So I'm just saying that. Well. I, I appreciate that. And I know she's always with us during these meetings. And I, I feel actually um, from what happened with your son that um, I'm sure that she's great friends with your son now. And obviously Morgan is as well. Um, but it was a similar situation and she was here for two days. Um, but anyway, uh, let's keep going. We have so many questions today. So um, the second one is, um, could you tell us, and I know that this is going to be so healing for parents, hmm. what heaven is like, what it's like where the kids are. Right, okay, so I, can I say that I will only share things that they show me. I don't go out of my way to ask them because I found if I ask, I don't get. If I don't ask, I get, okay? So what I have seen in the past is amazing colors. And what I will show you as an as example, just picking up something like this, for example, you see how pink that lid is? But when I see colour in spirit, it's like this colour pink is like a hundred times pinker than what it actually is. It, it, I, I can't describe it. It's like rainbows and colours and lights. Um, I, I see... Um, when people come into a region, I never see darkness. I always see color behind them. I see whiteness and, and yellows. And to me, it's just like the rainbow, like they're in a rainbow. That's the only way to describe it. 
I can't say that I, um, if they share stuff, I will say it. If people share that they're with children that have passed, I have had soldiers that have passed, that help other soldiers that passed to suicide, say, or, or that have been injured and passed that way. I've had children that have been bullied that then deal with children that have been bullied. People that have passed a cancer that then deal with children that have passed a cancer. Children that have died in, in not very nice circumstances due to abuse. They will show me again that they are being healed by or looked after by, you know, these children, you know, that have, have passed that way. And it almost feels like whatever we did here, it's almost like we help people the same way over there, you know, if an understanding as well. And I can also say that I've noticed that um, if, if people don't have their spirit family with them, they will have guides with them that are helping them and supporting them as well on that. That's beautiful. Oh, my goodness gracious. And I love those colors, too. And I've heard that from I many Many oh my God, I, I just love the colors. It's, I've got, you can't describe, you've got to see it here. You've got to see it here. Yeah. That's, that's wonderful. So Tom is asking, what feeds spirits and souls? What can we do to help our children and spirit to grow and evolve? You know, what I can say to you is the only thing I've learned is that love is the key. Love. That's all. And I would say to people, lift You've got to love from the heart because the brain is busy. It's a busy mind. It's a busy mind. It's also a, what I call the mortal mind, materialistic mind. But if you go to here, if you go to here and work from here, whenever I open up, before every reading I do my prayers, and what I do is I, I spend 15 minutes doing prayers. I stand in my chakra zone and I work with within my chakras. I, I, I put everything out to spirit and I say to them, lead me the way, bring in those that need, you know, sometimes people don't may not always hear what they want to hear or the people that they were hoping that would say certain things. It's not about that. It's like spirit knows what you need to hear because days later they will say to me, I realize it's not about me. It's what I need, not what I want. And I think that's amazing. I think that's amazing. So I just open up and I just let spirit walk in. That's it. And just, but you've got to leave from the heart, you know, put, put everything away that's materialistic, that's this human life and let love in. So do you think that it's, um, it's a, a possibility for all of us to connect with our kids? And oh, easy, easy, easy peasy, Japanese, as my <laughs> granddaughter would say got a saying about that at the moment she's only four okay but she uh, I would say easy I think the moment that you um you can't stop beating yourself up as parents as well, that's what something we've got to all stop doing you know I did that when I lost my son I put I, you know what did I eat you know what yeah I know I didn't smoke I didn't drink I had a perfect pregnancy but I thought you know you beat yourself up did I eat onions I remember thinking that and it, it's not about that it's like we've got to stop beating ourselves up as parents and we've just got to say this is what I did from personally myself I can't change what's happened god I miss my son it's 40 years ago this happened to me and it's been a heck of a 40 year journey but I can't change what's happened, but I want to communicate with him. I want him to know that I love him. And he's shown me in so many ways that he's around me. 40 years on, he still sends me things that I, like I showed you earlier, my feathers, my music that I get and, and stuff. I think for the moment that you just say, hey, guys, I'm sorry. You know what? I'm sorry. Whatever happened here, leave it here. What happened in Vegas stays in Vegas, that type of thing. <laughs> okay, and just say, I want to communicate. Let's let's move on from this and let's have the love and healing and peace that we need. And let's work together as a team because it's teamwork. That's beautiful. And I just want to tell you, I mean, I haven't been telling you, but everybody keeps writing about how how beautiful what you're saying is and how much it's helping them. And 
I, I feel the same way. Every time I hear you speak, it's always such a healing thing for me. But one of the things that Deb is asking is if our kids are healed, both um, physically and emotionally on the other side. Oh, oh 100%, 100%. I, I, you know, um, oh, I wish I could, there's so much I could share, but there's just not enough time. But what I will say to you is, this is our human life. The moment we walk through that door, we go back to spirit, yeah? We have to realize we're back home yeah we will see our life reviews oh come on we're human beings we make mistakes you know we all say and do things that are wrong you know most of us most of the time do not mean any harm by it we don't physically go out there mentally go out there to hurt somebody okay but there's some things that are done you know you go back home and you have to you have to face the music guys you have to face the music put your hands up and say i'm sorry about that you know, the amount of people that I will have coming to a region where parents have apologized or family members have apologized to someone. I had a lady, can I tell you, 52 years. She knew she had not done something when she was a child, but her siblings blamed her for something that she got so in trouble about. Her mum came into a reading and she said, darling, I'm so sorry. I know the truth now. And I'm so sorry that I blamed you. I know the truth. And she just said to me, Daisy, it took me 52 years to hear that apology from my mum. But I kept telling her I never did it. So everything to me is they know the truth. They know what's gone on, you know. But, you know, it's a human life. It's a human life. And it's so different. So when we go to spirit, to me, there's nothing but peace, healing and love, you know, and forgiveness and forgiveness. That's absolutely beautiful. And <laughs> that's exactly right. I mean, there is only love on the other side and they're home and we're still in school. So we're here to learn stuff. We're, we're here to learn how to communicate with them. They're over there working with all of our kids to communicate with us as well. And it's all good once we know that we're all going to be together. And as George Anderson said the other night, It'll be as though one, not one second has passed when we meet each other again, as though we haven't missed a single beat of everything that's been going on. So, um, but I have another question from Lindsay and she's asking about her 11 year old grandson. Um, her son passed away and she wants to know how she can encourage him to be able to be more connected with her, uh, with her son, his father in spirit. Do you have any ideas about that? Right, do you know, all I can say is that one of the best things I find is on YouTube, there's some fantastic, small, guided meditations. I even have a little med meditation that I do myself, very small, a uh, clear negativity. One of the best things we can do is clear negativity. You know, every morning I get in my shower, what a thought for you to all to see, but I do. Okay, sorry, get used to my sense of humour. But anyway, <laughs> so I step into the shower and I imagine that I'm covered in soot from head to toe. And the soot is my negativity that I, you know, that we get negativity every day, walking about, talking to neighbours, doing whatever we do, negativity. So I get in my shower and I go under my shower and I just imagine the golden white light is the water coming down on me and as it goes down me my soot color covers and goes down 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 and I see it go down through the plug hole that is my negativity going down and then I'm just the golden white light of protection that is a fantastic way for people to start their day I then say let God go before me and show me the way let God go before me and enlighten my day let God enlighten all those that cross my path today and I just say that and then that's my day started and I think just by doing something as simple as that which takes like seconds yeah and then I would say to people if you can get yourself some earphones something like this which is what I put simple things in my ears if it's nice weather go sit out in the garden or in your conservatory or somewhere that's quiet and maybe listen to a 10 minute clearing your chakras you know just clearing your chakras. Another nice thing for people that can't sleep at night because they've got a busy mind and they're going through grief as well, 
I listen to the rain or I listen to the ocean. You can just plug it in, in your ears. Some of them go on for up to eight hours. Guarantee you're gonna be asleep within 20 minutes and you'll naturally just take them out. So I just say to people, once you just do simple things like that, is quiet the mind and open the heart and let love step in. That's what I say. And then you'll start to communicate with, with your grandchildren, your children, your parents, whoever you want to, just let love in. Just keep saying, I let love in. That's all. That's beautiful. And I guess that's, that's, that's a wonderful answer to the question. At the same time, she's speaking about an 11 year old who has a, a father in spirit and is there any is there any way to encourage younger kids and just kids in general even siblings to be able to be more open to spirit because that's a hard thing i suppose that maybe listening to a guided meditation might be a possibility but a lot of times they're they just think that all of this is too complicated and not really of their age do you do you have any advice for that so the, the 11 year old is still living, is that correct? Yes, yes. And sorry. And the father has passed. So basically this child's not much, only a year older than what I was when I lost my mom. Yes. Yeah. 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 Do you know that it's very hard, but we live in different times as well. I've got to say, thank goodness we are, you know, you know, we have evolved since the 60s. And, you know, people are talking a lot more about this sort of thing. And what I would say to, what I would say personally, is just to sit with him or her, whoever the child is, and, and encourage them to talk to mummy or talk to daddy, you know, and maybe draw things as well. You know, kids can be very good in drawing things that come to their minds. And um, it, it's, it's a very difficult one because when you're sort of 10 or 11 year old, you're not a teenager, but you're not really a little kid anymore. And it's like you're in that in-between, you know. And also you're going to have people around you like I did that had not lost your parents, that you didn't have people around you, you know, that had, you still had the Mother's Day class and the Father's Day classes to go to at school, even though they didn't, you know, think about people that had lost children. So I think, you know, um, the grandmother, the mother, she, all she can do is do her best. And again, I, I truly believe that if she also opens up her heart and just say, okay, what, okay, you know, look, in 2018, after the 2018, I was working as, still working, doing nursing. And when my nursing was coming, I just said to Spirit one day, I said, if you want me to do this full time, you lead me the way, you show me the way and let me know if this is what I meant to do. And here I am two years on, you know, and I just believe, and I just think the parents and people have just got to say, okay, spirit, let's put away everything and just you lead me and help me to do this and deal with this. And I believe that it will just come. Well, and I think that your mom has been helping you all this time. And I'm sure that his father is going to do the same thing. And I think that a lot of times siblings who have uh, siblings in spirit are some of the most gifted uh, mediums as well. And they have an incredible connection, intuitive connection with their brothers or sisters in spirit. So um, you're right. It's wonderful to just be able to let them know that they can speak to them and that um, they will be getting messages from them as well. So mm. that's beautifully mm. said. Going back to what you were saying earlier, you were talking about water, taking this beautiful shower in the morning and getting rid of any negative energy. Do you ever have anything negative come through in reading? Sangeeta is asking. Is that something no. that you've ever experienced? No. Okay, no. good. You know why? Because I surround myself by the golden white light of spirit protection. I crown myself. I imagine that roots are coming out of my feet. They're going down into the earth, surrounding them. The, you know, the roots surround themselves by, by logs and bricks and whatever, and the roots of trees. I completely ground myself to this earth, surround myself by the golden white light of spirit protection. And I know my angels, my unseen team, I call them. You know, from the moment I walk in this room every morning, I just come and get my diary and my, my iPad. I open the window and I say, good morning room. And I go, I let them know good morning. And this evening I'll say, good night. You know, 
this is my room, this is my space. And I think you need to have a space and just, just, I just say, let love in, let love, healing and peace in to every single person that I read. That's beautiful. That's you just let love in. And I expected that answer. And of course, that's exactly what I expected. And um, Tom is asking if young children uh, like your son, do they age in spirit or do they say, stay the same age uh, as when they No, they age in spirit, 100% they age. And I'll tell you why. Um, I went on to have three children after Mark died. And within 14 months of losing Mark, I had my daughter Nadine and she's 38, the same age as me. Okay, and she's, um, she is so con connected to her brother in spirit so connected this is why i wanted i was hoping someone would might ask that question so i could show them so my son's song is somewhere over the rainbow i have the original disc original disc guys from 1980 when this was bought off just before mark died it was number one in the charts in the uk and i have the original disc somewhere over the rainbow so we called that mark's song so in our family mark's song has been a big deal you know, my um, daughter Nadine walked down the aisle to the instrumental um, somewhere over the rainbow, and so did her sister in 2012 on her wedding day. So what happened was um, three years ago now, coming up three years in February, uh, my daughter went to Amsterdam and she said, Mum, I've got a present for you when you get back, but I don't want you to open it until you get home because I don't want you to open it in the car. The car. It wasn't until I got home that I realised why she didn't want me to open it in the car. Because in Amsterdam, she went into a trinket shop and she thought, what is this? Why am I being led to this? Listen to what it plays. Yes, over the rainbow. It plays somewhere over the rainbow. So her, her brother led her to that. She was, used to play with her brother when she was a little girl. She used to play with him, yeah. And so, although he died at four days old, she would tell me that she's playing with him and, and stuff like that. And one day my, my eldest son ran in and I said, what are you running around like that for? He said, I'm being chased. And I said, who are you being chased by? And he went by Mark, of course. He was about six, so Mark would have been 18 months older than him. And he was said he was being chased by his brother. So I know that they grow in spirit. And I would say now, Mark isn't 40 in spirit. To me, when he does, although I don't actually see him physically, he helps bring in people sometimes. And I've got to say that some of those that I've read, um, their children have brought in my son, which I'm so glad they do it at the end of the reading because I'm just a mess. Because at the end of the day, uh, you know what? Uh, <laughs> I'm a brief mum first and a medium second, so it, 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 it does me in. And, um, you know, Mark, I would say, has only got to 30. I don't believe he's got any older than that. I just don't feel. I feel they get to a certain age, you know. But I've already just decided that when I pass one day, I'm going to be 28. I've already told Spirit that. <laughs> no messing. Okay, I'm going to be 28. So you choose the age you want to be. I've had some ch people that passed, uh, some children that passed, say, in their, their 40s or, or 30s, and they come into a reading, and they said, will you tell my mum or tell my dad, I'm eight. And they said to me, oh, my goodness, that was their favourite age. That was their best age. So sometimes they come in at that age. That is so interesting. Well, I just first of all... Fun. I just have to say that um, so many things that you've said today resonate with me because I just saw a video of Irene um, talking about this golden shower that she took to get rid of negative energy that was surrounding her about what happened with Carly. But then right after that, you brought in this Somewhere Over the Rainbow, which is also her song. And so I know that Carly is is part of this whole discussion right now, which is really fun. And then secondly, I, I wanted to ask you, um, because you brought up your other daughters who went down the aisle to somewhere over the rainbow, Terry is asking, do you have, uh, do your other children have the gift as well? 
Um, I'd say two out of four of my children definitely do. Um, and that would be my eldest daughter that's 38 and my youngest son that just turned 30. Uh, there's definitely a big connection there with them. There's just, uh, there's just things that they come out with and I just know. And can I also say I have eight grandchildren. I have five grandsons. Uh, one of which is 22, and that's my oldest grandson. And the youngest is a granddaughter that will be four in October. But my little granddaughter that's six is definitely a little medium in the making. And I tell you how I know that is because she, she woke up my, her mum, my daughter that's 34, she woke up her mum about 4.30 in the morning and she nudged her. And my daughter said, Ilana, what are you doing up? And she said, Mummy, I need to tell you something. And she said, what? And she said, you know when people die, they go straight through to the light. And my daughter went, Ilana, what? And she said, they do, because I know, okay? And then she just turned around and went and got back in her bed. But she'll make, she'll make, um, uh, you know, when she was uh, two years old, she made, um, you know, the, the pretend cups of tea with the cups and saucers that children have. And she gave my son-in-law a cup of tea. She gave me a cup, uh, she gave her mum a cup of tea and her other sister a cup of tea. And then she pushed it to an empty space. And my son-in-law said, who's that for? And she went, oh, your grandma that sat there. And my son-in-law just went to my daughter, call your mother because he don't, he don't, he gets really freaked out. Call your mother, he went, because, you know, but that's, that's how I know that my granddaughter, so she's going to be like the fifth or sixth generation, I think, of mediums. That's absolutely beautiful. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Well, tell me something. Uh, Rose is asking, do our kids mind us contacting them daily? Ah, not at all. It's just a phone call. You know, do you care about calling your daughter, your son, your mum, your dad, your uncle, your best friend? How many of us make phone calls every day? To me, it's the same thing, okay? You're not interrupting them. I always say, oh, someone's messing my hair. Oh, my goodness. I just felt someone pull my hair. Someone's confirming this. So I always say, right, Elizabeth, I write an email and I send it to you. You get it instantly, correct? But how did it get from me to you in that instant? And that's where I believe the spirit is. They're between me sending out that email and you receiving it. That's where they are. They're not up there. They're not, they're just within us. It's just they're in a different realm. You know, they blow my mind with stuff that they show. I quickly just want to say, I mean, you can see it on my page, the people have put their names to it as well. You know, I did a reading for a lady the other day, and near the end of the, well, I don't know, 20, 30 minutes into the reading, I said to her, your son just said, tell my mum, did she get the bird? And did she get the bird poop with it? And she went, oh, I knew it was him. So a bird came into their kitchen, flew into their lounge, and pooped up a photograph frame, right? And... Her son said, tell my mum it didn't poop up my photo, only hers. And it was true. And he brought it up into a reading. Now, they're showing you that they were there. They saw it. They saw you chasing that bird, trying to get it out of the house. Another lady, I said to her again, it was last week. I said to her, um, do you connect to the name Rose? And she went, no, not at all. I said, can you write it down? There's something about the name Rose. And she went, okay. And then next minute, I had a money spider coming down from my ceiling. And I said, hang on a minute. I just need to put this money spider. So I opened out the window, put it out the window, sat back down. And I said to her jokingly, I went, well, if that had been a tarantula, it would have been, see ya, I'm out of here. You know, in a joking way. Thought no more about it. An hour after the reading, she contacted me. Again, it's on my page. Anyone can read it. And the lady's name is on there. And I said, she said to me, Daisy, you are never going to believe what happened. I went and saw my friend just after your reading to tell her about the reading. She opened the door and I said to her, what's the matter? And she went to me, my tarantula just died. It's called Rose. Oh, my goodness. And her son. Oh, amazing. Yes. Well, 
Listen, I just want to tell you, first of all, that you have so many people asking how to contact you. I wanted to see, I know that you're always busy. Do you have any space uh, in the upcoming, uh, or, or how far out are you, first of all? And then... So I'm now, taking, I'm now taking waiting lists because I'm booked out to October. I do have a vacation holiday if in UK we use that word okay um in booked but however because of what's going on in the world right now we don't know if we're still going ahead so what I'm doing is I'm taking waiting lists for October weekends you know weekends are fully booked out at the moment because in the USA most of you work Monday to Friday so it's really hard and with our time difference as well so I try to accommodate everybody so I'm taking waiting lists I am going through it slowly so what happens is no one pays before a reading until the week before I never take payment until the week before that gives the people the opportunity to when I contact to say hey your reading is a week's time do you still want to go ahead with it or would you like to reschedule or cancel even that gives them, most people don't, but I do get the odd one where at least two might say, you know, I now have to work or blah, blah, blah. And that's when I go on my waiting list and offer it the first out to the person that can deal with that sort of time, depending on what time it is. And that's how I work. That sounds wonderful. Well, I was just mm. wondering, um, since you're here and we're all here, could you maybe, uh, do you have any kids that are coming through or just any, any thoughts that they're bringing you right now for us just to know? Why am I, pick, I am picking up on the name Tom for some reason, but I don't know why. Now, I, did you mention the name Tom earlier? Yes, I did. I did. Yeah, and uh, something was to question. do with the name Tom as well. Yeah. But I don't know where that's going. I've got to say 2012 there, the month of October and March actually connects as I'm just saying it, but I don't know where I'm going with it. Okay. Okay. He might understand that more. I always say to people, if I give a month, it normally means it's someone's birthday, living or past. Someone passed that month or it's a wedding anniversary. It normally goes with the person that I open up the reading with. That's how I connect with months and numbers. And then it goes bigger and bigger from there as well. Okay, well, good. He might get back to you in a minute. He might get yeah, back to you. Yeah, if Tom is, is uh, recognizing any of this, that would be wonderful. Um, yeah, we'll, do, we'll just leave. Oh, in September. I've just been told September is fun. Rose is saying that she thinks it's her, it's her little man pulling your hair when you answered her question because he's very mischievous. So you were answering her question when that happened. Yeah, they, they pull my hair. I get orbs in a big way, by the way. Some people will see orbs in my, you know, I did a, oh my God, I don't know if Misty's watching this, but Misty lost both her sons within like nine months of one another, or only two boys. She's had about four readings with me, her boys. Like, if you think that kids are gonna come in with doom, he's doing it again, pulling my hair. If you think your kids are gonna come in with doom and gloom, forget it. They're gonna come in, they're gonna joke with you. They're gonna pull your leg. They're gonna tell you funny things that you're gonna be laughing at. And her sons are exactly the same. I don't know if Eileen Deary is watching it, but Eileen is the most beautiful lady. Yeah. She lost both her sons. Yeah, she has gifted like 39 readings with me, gifted. She is the most generous lady. She has done Skype where I've only known that person's first name 10 minutes before a reading. And, well, Eileen um, is here, so I, maybe, I maybe here. we could pull her on um, just to say something here. Um, I could you talk Daisy. a little bit about, about Hello, Daisy. Daisy? Hello, Daisy. Hello, darling. How are you? I'm well. I'm hanging in there. Okay, That's good. I've been so good. I'm behaving myself. The ex nurse, you see. So I'm I'm doing everything that the guidelines to keep myself safe. Yes, um, my boys drive Daisy crazy, even on even on vacation, right, Daisy? <laughs> oh my goodness! Can we tell them what happened in? Well, I was in Lanzarote, one of the Spanish sure. islands. Sure. And I actually messaged her because I was sat in a restaurant and this song suddenly come on, come on Eileen, come on. And I thought, hang on a minute, I know this energy. And it was her son. I'll let you go from there, Eileen. 
Yeah, it was, uh, it was my son. He used to, he knew I didn't really like that song and he would always play it for me and dance around and sing. So <laughs> he was bugging Daisy that day while she was out having lunch with her husband and he was telling her to, to contact me. So, and Daisy contacted me and I was at work and boy, I was, I was, uh, I was crying in my office. But not, that was not sad tears, is that correct? Oh, no, 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 that was happy tears. That was happy tears. Eileen, tell them I've been mooned at by your boys, have I not? Yeah, yeah. My yeah, they're rascals, they're <laughs> rascals. They've done the most fun things. They've told, you know, what about your friends? You remember the, one of the male friends that, that didn't believe in what I did almost, and, and he, he showed me, one of your boys showed me he was sat in his jeep where he had the flowers and went yeah. to his grave and everything yeah. and left yeah. a beer. It was yeah. crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have come through for both Niles's friends and Josh's friends, and they all were so grateful because they missed the boys so much. But not only that, it gave them an opportunity to think about an afterlife. You know, I never thought about it when I was younger. So by me gifting these to both of my son's friends, it's giving them the opportunity to really, really think about this. And I just think um, hearing from someone is the, the greatest gift you can give. So I just totally am, you know, in, indebted to you. You know, I just, I, you've just been wonderful. Oh, bless your heart. You know, um, uh, you know, another person, I don't know if Robin's there. I don't know if Robin he is there. She's been writing in the chat box, oh, Robin. Oh, my gosh, Robin. Up? Oh, my good. I've known Robin. Can you years. unmute yourself? Is Robin there? She is. She's saying yes. I'm trying to find her, actually. Let's see. Um, her daughter, you know, Anna, has been, my, yeah, we've done some wonderful readings. Do you know how to unmute yourself, Rob? I see you here. Can I? I just asked you to unmute. Can you speak? Here you are. Okay. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yes. Hi, darling. Hi, dear. Yes. We have had some wonderful readings with Daisy. Um, uh, me and my son, and then I like connected a whole bunch of other people, and they always come out of my office crying so happy saying that was so spot on you, you can't you can't make this stuff up and daisy knows that <laughs> robin, can, robin robin do you remember when in the reading where the yellow bird came to the window and then you went to the grave later can you tell them about that i can wait a siren is just going by sorry about that <laughs> you know i was thinking about that daisy while i was uh actually watching you can you still hear me something just backed out. Uh, yes, we just got a screen okay. share, but it's gone okay. now. <laughs> you know, uh, one day my son and I had a reading with Daisy. She, at the end, she, you know, there was a few things. At the end, there was a bird, a blue bird, and she said the colors yellow and orange, and we didn't know what she was talking about. Well, we left after the reading, went to the cemetery, and there was a little plastic blue bird in the ground as well as somebody had left yellow and orange flowers but the bird that daisy's talking about is we, i was just doing a reading one day alone with her and all of a sudden this bird came and was like kind of pecking on her window and and daisy kept looking at it going well, what is with this bird here and that now has become my emoji it's a little bluebird because that's, I, took know, a photo, I took a photograph of it. It comes from the memory. It's still on my page. Yeah. Yep. I took yep. a photograph of the bird. Yeah. 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 Oh, oh, you know, I encourage anyone, you know, if you have any fear or any concern, don't. Because, like Daisy said, it's all about love, light, healing. Our children, our loved ones want to connect with us and they just want to bless us and let us know that they're okay. They are happy, whole, and complete. Robin, do you remember your daughter keep telling me about something that you had on a wall that was like the size of a parachute that was made out of her clothes? Do you remember that? And then you suddenly yes. got all the That was amazing. Right. Yeah, yes, yes. She showed you like a parachute, something made out of her clothes. 
And my girlfriend had just made this bigger than king size quilt of all of Anna's clothes. And I had to go in the bedroom and take a picture of it because I have it displayed on a wall and sent it to Daisy because she, she's seen it. And, and you, so many validations, so many validations. I, I could go on and on, but this is not my show, Daisy. You, you know. <laughs> well, thank you, oh, Robin. Thank you. This is wonderful. And I wondered, Tom has answered some of the questions. I was wondering if we can unmute Tom. Is that okay, Tom? Uh, are you willing to come on and talk to Daisy, possibly? Hi, can you hear me? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yes. Hello. Hi there. Uh, yeah, the uh, the month that you mentioned, October is one of my daughter's birthday, and September is my wife here. That's her birthday. So uh, I'm not sure about March. I, I may need to do a little research on that one. Yeah. Always remember, if it's not the month, it's a number, which would be three. So that could be, for example, that you're three in the family. One, two and him three, or it can be the third of the month, okay? But I always say to people, you normally work out what it is as well. Does the year 1996 mean anything to you? Not immediately, no, but and she again, was about and, and also three when she comes And also 2008. I, I think we would need to look that up. Yeah, um, you're, you're fine. Can't remember they're, right they're now. very good working with me uh, like that. On that, I very much connect with month, months, and numbers. Often people will get back to me and say, "Look, I did a late reading for a lady a few weeks ago, and I said to her, do you connect to the month of June and the month of 1991?'" And she said to me, "Don't mean anything to me." I said, "Well, your husband told me to say that." And she said, no. Anyway, a few days later, she got back to me and she went, oh my goodness. She said, that's our wedding anniversary. And that's when I got married to him. She just completely forgot. And that's what happens in a reading sometimes. That's why I allow people to come back. Well, it's hard okay. when I pull Tom on here all of a sudden. And I, I think that everybody should understand in whatever reading you're doing with whomever you're doing it, we all get grief amnesia and it's sometimes hard to remember on the spot. And I've had readings with people where I say, no, 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 I don't know, I don't know. And then five minutes after walking out, I'll think, oh my gosh, that's Morgan's best friend. <laughs> so, do you know, I don't know if, um, do you know if Janet's there at all? Janet at all? Thank you, Janet? Tom, though. Thanks. Yeah, let, let's see Thank if Janet. You. So what's Janet's last name? Um, oh, my, oh, my goodness, Janet. Janet. Um, oh, my goodness. I've, I've had a mental block with Janet's name now. Maybe Janet um, knows. Her granddaughter. Even if I don't. And I'm looking her for Janet. Her granddaughter, right granddaughter Haley. Oh, my goodness. What's going on with me? I've had a mental block of her name. Well, I don't see a Janet, but um, yeah, she she lost a granddaughter. Her granddaughter's been amazing with me. She died, She she passed quite a few years ago, but she's been an, uh, that's another amazing, um, you know, uh, reading. Well, I um, I was wondering. Um, Anna just asked a really interesting question. Um, and I know that you're probably, it's late over there. I don't know don't how much longer Don't worry about me. Don't worry about me. It's only, it's we only sometimes nine o'clock. Go it's until nine. the half hour, go, go half hour past the hour if that's don't a possibility, I'm, but I'm I don't want to. Okay, no, so let me just ask for Anna. She's saying, how, does, how do our children view us um, as energy or in our physical bodies? Um, do, do, you, do you know how they um, are able to, uh, feel us and, and see us from the other so, side. Just our soul connection, our souls, our soul. Yeah, just our souls. So yeah. I've heard that they can actually hug us uh, and that they feel oh, the yes. hug. Yes. Oh, yes. And, uh, do you know the amount of readings where I've done where I've said to someone, you know, their husband or their wife they, that they've lost have felt them put their arm around them and hug their felt their energy right behind them. Well, yeah. some of us are lucky enough to feel that. And I definitely feel it when Morgan hugs me. But even if we are not feeling it, they are feeling it. Oh, they there we feel... go. She, sorry, Janet Kingsley. Oh, sorry, Anna just put up her name. I'm complete. How can I forget Janet's name? I'm always talking to her. Okay. 
<laughs> well, it doesn't look like she's on here. Oh, Shoshana no. is asking what your website is. And maybe Irene can type that in if you can. I, I don't have a website. I only oh. have a Facebook page. Um, so your Facebook page is just Daisy Moore. Is that correct? Just Daisy May Medium or Daisy Medium. I, it's one or the other. Okay. Okay. Daisy but, May Medium. Okay. Yeah. And basically people can email me. They do not have to be on Facebook. Do you know, I do so many readings via Skype, FaceTime. All they need to do is email me at daisymaymedium at yahoo.com. Okay. Maybe and Irene, can, you can type that in Daisy May Medium at yahoo.com yeah it's very good to know don't i do so many readings on skype so many readings on skype because a lot of people aren't on social media you know and do you know i actually quite like that as well because i go in you know all my readings are completely blind but you know i just like that as well to have the variation of readings well that's wonderful and i know that um when I did my reading with you, I did it by Skype back at, at that time because that was all that existed, actually. Well, we, yeah, we didn't have Messenger or anything. That was in the old days, wasn't it? So Kathy is asking if you do readings on Zoom. Now you probably do, right? Because you use Zoom or not. <laughs> Zoom can be a pain in the you-know-what sometimes for me. As you saw tonight, did it not work? Do you know what I mean? So yes. I tend to use Skype or FaceTime, it tends to work better for me. I don't know if it's because it's an international thing, but I just go with what works best for me. Um, I actually find in Messenger, and people don't realize that you can have Messenger without having Facebook. It's completely, two years ago, they separated themselves from Facebook. So you can download Messenger, no, and there's no connection to Facebook whatsoever. Well, yeah. that's, that's wonderful. Yes. And the it's quality is very good. The video quality is very good as well. And it can be recorded as well. I believe. Uh, is that not correct? Messenger, it can't. But if they, want it, if they want it recorded, then I'd say Skype. Oh, yeah. okay. By Skype, they can record mm -hmm. it. Um, Lindsay is saying that her son, Mikey touched her shoulder going back to that hug three days after he passed. My husband saw my reaction. Nobody else was around. So that's beautiful. Do you know, also, um, there's so many other things they can do. Last year, for my son's 39th birthday, we were actually on holiday, and I took some bubbles, scents, because you know I'm very anti-balloons. Okay, what goes up comes down. So I did bubbles, and I got my husband to film it in slow motion with his phone, and it was amazing. These bubbles went all over the place. And then two big bubbles seemed to go off. And I thought, oh, they're going off. They got together in this biggest bubble and almost created a heart, flew back and landed right in my heart. That's beautiful. You can't oh do that with goodness. balloons. You can't do that with balloons. Once they're gone, they're gone. But with bubbles, spirit can control the bubbles. And I actually see, you see the rainbows and you see letters. It's amazing. But if you do it in slow motion, you see it even better. Denise is asking what it feels like when they hug. Can I, can I answer this real quick myself? Yes, go on. Yes. <laughs> I got a hug from Morgan um, the, the minute he passed at the base camp of Mount Everest. And it felt just like every hug that I ever got from him. I could feel him hugging me from the inside. And actually, I was never able to cry because he wouldn't let me. Every time I would start to feel sad, I would feel him hugging me. And it was almost like I'd had a glass of red wine or, you know, a sip of red wine. And it would just come up through me, just this feeling of happiness. And it was impossible not to be happy. So I know that they do this to everyone. And the most important thing is to be able to be open to receive it and you'll feel them. But um, obviously all kids communicate in different ways. So they might not be specialized in those hugs, but Morgan's nickname when he was on the cheerleading squad was Big Bear because of his huge bear hugs that he would give everyone. So anyway, Daisy, can you answer that question? 
what how on how they can come to us you mean and how they no, can get just the about how it feels when you get a hug from your from your child I, and spirit do you know i'd love to say that but i'm only a giver i'm not a receiver okay so maybe so Mark i don't i don't get, I give get you hugs <laughs> No, sadly, none of my family come to me. I can only give out. I can only give to others. They don't come to me. Very rarely do I get stuff. But I'm happy with that. If that means that's what I'm meant to do. Well, you know, it's interesting, Daisy. I've heard from so many incredible evidential mediums, some of the best, who say that they are able to give it to others, but they don't get their loved ones coming to them no, um, never. No. So many no. times they go to someone else to find out about how their loved ones in spirit are doing. Ah, uh, see, I don't personally, I don't go to mediums myself because to me, how I look on it is that I've been given this gift to do this job and and that I know that to me it's like ting 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 in spirit, like you know that I'm earning my wings. That's the way I look at it. <laughs> You are earning them in spades. Oh my goodness gracious. And yes, I agree with you. And they are all going to be in a huge long line, lining up to hug you when you get there. So um, no COVID fears there either, which is wonderful. So anyway, well, um, I, I wanted to ask if you have anything that you'd like to say in conclusion um, and maybe any advice or information that you'd like to give to the parents who are on here tonight. Um, and it's not, that you know, the cool. best advice I could ever give is to anybody is don't be sad. Okay. For your children, because one thing I've learned in readings where kids will come in of all ages and they will say to their parents, Mom, will you stop crying? Dad, will you stop crying? It's like, it's killing me here. You know, I can't, you know, if, if the shoe was on the other foot and you were in spirit, you'd be saying to your son, will you stop crying for me? I'm happy. You know, I'm happy. I'm loved. I'm cared for. I'm at peace. I want the best for you. All our family in spirit one is the best for us. They don't want to see us crying. They don't want to see us grieving for them. Of course, this is our human body. This is our human emotions, you know, and you know, it took me four and a half years to get a place to a place. Don't ask me that place, what it's called or how to explain it. I can't because I can't. And I know that most people, parents will say that you know, and everybody grieves differently. There is no two ways of grieving. There isn't. You, there's no two ways. And it, you people go for what works best for them. But what I will say to them, if you go into a reading open-minded, you can, you know, look, I had a, you know, I had a lady, she's on my page, and she put a wonderful message up. And, she, you know, she was going to end her life because of her son's passing. She had a reading with me and it uh, crushed me when she said to me, this was my last thing. And if this didn't, I was going to end my life. She said, the reading changed my life around. And I realized that I'm going to live my life for my son. And I know now that one day when I pass, that's the first face that I'm going to see when I pass and and you know to have something like that that's like that's like winning the lottery for me you know it's just like how can you even put that into words how that's helped someone you know to to carry on this life because I truly believe that losing a child no matter what age believe me no matter what age and you know that yourself you know every a life is a life a baby is something that we've carried and we all look forward to the future with our children. You know, someone put up earlier. Hang on a minute. <laughs> it's her son's 40th birthday today. And I wish her a happy birthday. And she put all these memories from her child, from, from the moment he was born, to his marriage, to his children and everything. And suddenly it hit me like this. And I thought, 
is 40 years ago I lost my son and this lady's just put up who had her son the same year as me a lifetime of memories and I think when you lose a baby you lose the whole lifetime of memories you know and and to, so every 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 um child loss no matter what age no matter stillbirth child loss, you know loss in, in uterus and everything is is painful and you know i always say this that when someone miss, loses a miscarriage yeah and someone loses a child like i did or even a stillbirth let's go into three you know i've lost a miscarriage so i know what that feels like i've lost a child that lived and i know what that feels like i haven't lost a child that was stillborn i don't know what that feels like so what i say to people is when someone comes to you and they say to you oh i lost a child you know as a as a, a miscarriage or a stillbirth you do not say to them well i lost a child you know blah 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 because what i would say to you is their pain is the only pain they know a stillbirth is the only pain they know my birth but the way i lost my son is the only pain i know you cannot expect a mother to know your pain for a child that you've lost that's grown. You can't compare both. So what you say to someone is you have, you have compassion and love for that mother and, and, and say to them, I'm so sorry, you lost your child as, as a baby. But that's the only pain they know. And don't, don't, don't then try and put your loss of what you lost, you know, as a, as, as a child that lived for so many years because you can't compare. I had a lady once say to me, I never forget this, it was about three years ago. I did a reading for her. She lost her, late, she lost her daughter at 28 years old. She said to me, I hear you lost a son at four days. And I said, yes, I did. And she said to me, well, I lost my daughter at 28. And she said, so it took you, what, four days, four years to get over the loss of your son? She said, I'm still living the loss of my child all those birthdays, all the Christmases. And I just turned to her and I said, how lucky are you to have the memories of every birthday, every Christmas? Cut me like a knife. I'm so sorry, Daisy. And I totally- But understand. that happens, that happens. You know, one of the things that I have learned on this journey is how lucky I am because, um, in spite of the fact that I have two children in spirit, actually I have three because I had a miscarriage before, before Chelsea. So mm -hmm. three children in spirit. I also have two children that are incredible here. And I know that there are people who have had more children pass. And I also know that there are people who don't have children here, that they have their kids who are over mm -hmm. uh, on the other side, just almost as though it's just a piece of cellophane that's that's separating us from them but at the same time i feel so grateful every day every day i feel grateful because there's always someone i mean what you're saying is that there are always people who are telling you that their stories might be more difficult than than our own stories are but there are also also by seeing that there are other people out there who are living things that that might be more difficult, I feel so grateful. And I realize that we are all together on this journey. This journey is a, a journey that we're walking that same path towards getting to see our kids again. Every single day is one day closer. And I also feel like I am not afraid at all of dying because dying is actually being with them and being into, uh, moving into that light where they are right now but i have so much to do right now i don't ever want to get there and i know they don't want me to either because there's too much to do here so i agree with you we are all exactly the same it doesn't matter how our kids passed doesn't matter at what age they passed they are mm -hmm. all friends now they're having a fabulous time they're, they're all our babies that's what i say they're all our babies they're watching us and they are so proud. And Daisy, I am sure that Mark is probably one of the proudest of all of them, thinking about all of these parents that you've been able to help. And he must be 
absolutely the big guy on campus in terms of everybody else over there. You know what also amazes me how how things are uncanny. And I'll give you an example. There's a lady again on my page. I did a reading, and my son was born with. Remember, I said to you when we first joined, and you said to me, "Help, welcome to HPH." And I went, "Why did you write HPH?" And you said to me, "Well, helping parents heal." And I said, "Oh my goodness, Elizabeth, my son died of HPH, a hyperplastic heart." Oh. And you went to me, "That's no coincidence that you're doing what you did," and. So I've got two ladies on my page that both their sons passed to a hyperplastic heart, yeah, born with half a heart. One of the ladies was born in 1980 and her son was born the same day as my son, December the 5th. But how, you know, she said to me, here I am, the same age as your son. Your son died, um, he was born on my birthday in 19... 80 and here I am having a reading with you I mean that's wild you know and I did a reading for a lady that's again that she I know she might be even watching this she lost her son um Liam last year and he was born with a hyperplastic left heart and he passed you know I believe the 2nd of December and it was just crazy how we've met and I just still believe that somehow our kids and spirit are controlling everybody somehow that we meet for a reason. I did a reading for a lady and I said to her, at the end of it, in the in England, and I said to her, whereabouts are you in the UK? And she went, oh, I'm in Littlehampton. I said, oh, my mum, my mum's buried there. That's where I lived. And she went, what, Littlehampton Cemetery? And I went, yeah. She said, that's where my mum's buried. Well, that's beautiful. You know, it's like, you know, there's so many where we, 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 oh, there's so many where we have coincidences. Well, they're not coincidences, are they? We were all put together. And I just believe that our children, you know, this is why when someone contacts me and if they inquire about a reading, I send the whole thing out and I leave it to them. If they don't, I don't hear from, I don't pester no one. That's up to them. And some people will come back, some people won't. And that's because I believe the right people come back at the right time when they're meant to for whatever reason, a year, two years down the line, I'll leave it to spirit, you know, and I, I leave them to do the whole lot and work out who, you know, what, what's going on and stuff. And also sometimes I do readings where le lessons are learned as well for one reason or another, you know? Well, that's, that's beautiful, Daisy. And I just feel so grateful that you've been able to stay up so late to be with us tonight, especially ah, since you are always so busy. Nine. Okay, it's so getting, it's not too it's just bad. Getting dark here. Okay. Oh, it's just getting dark. Yes, because it's it's just so... here. We, get, we we have daylight till ten o'clock at night here. Yes, that's wonderful. Well, I miss being over there. I just saw on my Facebook that I was uh, in Portobello Market this this day last year because my daughter graduated from UCL, and so. Um, I won't be I'll over there for a long time because we aren't allowed over there. <laughs> but... You know, I've, I've met, I've met up, you know, the lady I told you whose husband, whose dad had Alzheimer's. Do you know that she flew from New York with her husband to come over and we met up in Cobble Garden. That's oh. how much she wanted to meet up with me. Well, that's wonderful. Hopefully someday soon we'll all be able to be traveling again, uh, oh, both yes. here in the States and, and overseas. But um, until then, we can still meet by Zoom, which is wonderful. And our kids are all together. Even if we are not together physically, they are. And they're having a blast. And they're so, so, so proud of all of us. And I just oh my goodness. appreciate you for affirming that with everything. That you, you know what? Well, I always love, love to say to everybody that's watching this, you know, just open your heart, let love in, and just trust in spirit. I trust in spirit. I always say this to people, spirit have no reason to lie. What gain is there? There's no money. There's no materialistic world. Do you know what I mean? I always say that let love in. And I want to also get my candle before we go as well, because I've always, I've had this candle burning since the moment we started the reading. And whoever's watching this now, I just want to give out love, light, healing, and peace to every single person. 
And I just want to say, um, God bless each and everybody's soul. Can we also, all of us, just put out the love and healing to this beautiful planet that we live on? We must remember this planet. I thank this planet every day and give gratitude. She's taken a beating. She's taken a bashing. And I think if we all pull together, we can by doing little bits, just, some, you know, this planet's, we're just guests, that's all, you know. So I always thank the planet. I always give out love, healing and peace to people going through bereavement, ill health, financial worries, anything where they just need love, healing and peace. I put that out every day and I never forget to give out what I call our beautiful um, creatures of this earth, our beautiful wildlife our animals, our fur babies, and just remember they have souls also. So I just want to end this just by giving out the love, healing and peace to everything and everybody and God bless everybody's soul. Thank you, Daisy. Do you mind if I uh, ask everyone to unmute and say thank you and goodbye? And this is what we normally do at the end of every meeting. Thank and you. Know thank you. Both. Everybody's thank you, Daisy. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you. 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 Thank California. <laughs> oh, oh my God, California. Uh, from India to 